Well, good Tuesday, friends, and welcome back to another devotional Bible study. I'm so happy to be with you and connecting with you in this way. I just hope you're just really, really having a great day or about to have a great day and really praying God's blessing on you today. You know, if today's devotional had a title, it would be, Are We There Yet? I mean, how many of you have had that experience of either having a kid in the backseat or being the kid in the backseat? You're just driving on seemingly endlessly and somebody says, are we there yet? Well, kind of if we were there, we wouldn't still be driving, but how close are we? And some of you have had that experience, uh, some of you even with me, where we've been flying some great distance for a mission uh, trip or something, and maybe some of you went to India with us. Uh, you know, that's such a long flight, and they've got that map up that shows you, you know, this little plane icon where you are in the grand scheme of things, and you just keep looking up there and try not to look at it too often, but you just keep looking, okay. We're still making progress. Well, listen, the third, the next step in uh, moving forward is uh, to begin earnestly looking ahead in faith and uh, realizing we're not there yet, but saying, what are, what are you hoping for and praying for? You know, the first question in this series was, what do we feel like we've lost? And, and we laid that before the Lord in, in an act of mourning and grieving, and the Lord fulfilled his promise, didn't he? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And then last week, we spent our time giving thanks, giving thanks to the Lord for what we have, what we still have, and even for some of the things that we've gained during this time. Well, now we come to the third and final question in this mini-series, and that is, what are you hoping and praying for? If you look off into the future now, what are you really hoping for? What are you really praying for? Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Philippians chapter 3. Uh, we're going to be looking at some verses that I have referenced countless times in 40 years of ministry. And I, I know it's been helpful to others because it's been helpful to me. This, this particular passage has just been so helpful to me in uh, motivating me forward and propelling me on in the Lord's good plan for our lives. So turn in your Bibles, if, if you will, to Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 14 specifically. And Paul says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I love this passage. It is so inspirational to me. And this is the passage that we'll be using for all three of our devotionals this week. I want to focus on different aspects of it each time. And this time, I just want you to focus on the, the, the fact that Paul said he's not there yet. He has not arrived yet. The Apostle Paul, of all people, he says in verse 12, not that I've already obtained all this or have or I've already been made perfect. He says, I'm not there yet. I'm not done yet. I'm still moving forward. Verse 13, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. The Apostle Paul, of all people and all of his accomplishments, he had not considered himself yet to be finished, that he was still in a forward motion, still in a process. Paul wasn't there yet. If you look at verses 4 through 8, you can see that the, he begins to, or, or talked about uh, his list of accomplishments prior to coming to Christ. And uh, he says, uh, uh, if anyone has anyone thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, that is on the basis of what he's done, um, if anyone thinks he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. He says, circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. And so Paul's saying here, you know, hey, if anybody has any reason to say, I'm there, I look at look at me, he said it would be me. But as you read on, he says, ah, that's nothing. He said, all of that I consider nothing, rubbish, for the sake of, uh, of following Jesus Christ as my Savior and as my Lord. And he just lifts up this, this reality as the apostle, the great apostle of the New Testament. He says, he says, you know, we're not finished. We're still in process. We're not there yet. 
And this passage just propels us into the future. And that's that's where we're looking this week is as you look into the future, what are you hoping for? What are you praying for? Is there something on your heart that you'd like to see in the future that uh, you could be hoping for and praying for as we as we move through this week and as we as believers begin to move forward during this this critical pandemic time? Now, one of the things I think is, in, is so important to realize is that not only are we not there yet, but we were not there yet. We were not there yet. You know, some of us are, are just thinking so much. I, I will just love it when we can get back to being the church that we were or, you know, meeting in the ways that we were, doing the ministries that we were. And that's so natural. I, I feel that same thing. But moving forward, listen now, moving forward depend into God's future depends on our willingness to surrender to the reality that we are not only are we not there yet, but we weren't there then. We weren't there then. Otherwise, we will try to move backward in, 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 in an effort to simply regain what we had. And there, there's always a temptation to look backward and say, can't we be like that again? That's such a natural, natural tendency, I think, in human nature, is to think back and say, can't we be like that again? And the answer is no, we can't. And, and listen, this is, this is what I really want you to get. We will never get a picture of God's future by looking backward. We will never get a glimpse, a sense, a revelation of the future that God has for his people by looking backward and saying, can't we just have that again? Come on. You know, nothing is was was the same as we we think about it in our memories. I, I, I know when we think of cherished memories, uh, I don't I'm not sure that any anybody can really remember with full accuracy. <laughs> we kind of remember it in a in, in perhaps an exaggerated way. And I'm not saying we haven't had wonderful times because, in fact, we have. But listen. We weren't there yet. Remember, even when we were there, what were we praying? More, Lord, more. Remember, come on. We were enjoying the presence of the Lord. We were enjoying what God was doing in our lives and in our church and, in, in, you know, using us in the world. We were, we were absolutely caught up in that a wonderful way. But at the same time, we were always praying more, Lord, more, more. And that's because we knew then that we weren't there. You know, we were content, but we weren't satisfied. We wanted more. And I believe God's answered our prayer. And I believe well, God will answer our prayer in the midst of this pandemic if we will not keep looking backwards and saying, I want that back. And instead we will look forward and we will say, Lord, what is your perfect future for us? What do you want now? And it all begins by saying, Lord, I recognize that that I'm not finished yet, and that I want the more. Would you join me this week in doing that? Would you just make that your prayer? You know, we've, we've, we've mourned what we've lost. We've thanked him for what we have. And now, would you just join me in looking forward, not backwards, but looking forward and saying, Lord, what is your plan for our future? Show me something that I can hope for, that I can pray for, that I can surrender to, that I can sign up for. Would you show me something in the coming future. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, I, I just thank you again for this privilege of connecting with your people in this way. And I am just pray, Lord, that it's a blessing and an encouragement and a strengthening to their hearts. Lord, as we are in this place, we know that the church is not crippled. We're just being challenged to look to the future. And so we, we lay claim to that reality. And Lord, I just, I just ask that not only for the church, but for every believer, for, for myself, Lord, that you would just put in our hearts, put in our minds, put in that place inside of us that we connect with you and, and kind of see things from you, Lord. What are we praying for? What are we hoping for? If we left the past behind, Lord, what could the future be? Oh, God, we realize that we have not yet arrived. And so we surrender to that reality. And we ask you 
to fulfill your perfect future. Lord, we pray. We pray for uh, uh, the people of this church. We pray for the people who are connecting. We pray for the, the nation and the world, Lord, that you would defeat this COVID thing, that you would cancel this thing from Satan, that you would crush this virus in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would wipe it off the face of the earth. And yet while we're in this time, Lord, we pray that you will fully grasp us, that you will fully invade our hearts, that you will clear away things that shouldn't have been there, and that you'll replace with your preferred future, God. Lord, we just, we just ask these things and these blessings together in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks again for being here with uh, with me today. Uh, I'm praying for you. I love you. And uh, remember, live by faith, but walk in wisdom. You got it. See you next time.